All right. So basically, a median is a line that goes from the vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side. And if we draw one median in, it cuts this line in half, which means that these two parts have the same area. If the area is x, then they have the same area because they have the same base and they have the same height. Okay, so that's when we draw one median. But if we draw three medians, the cool thing about this is that it divides into six parts now. We have one part, two, three, four, five, six, right? And the cool thing is all of the all six of these parts have the same area. Okay. So all six of these same area. Okay. So those are medians. And one last thing about medians is let's look at what the relationship between the centroid and the median. So centroid is going to intersect every single median at some point. Right? If we were to have this median here, the centroid cuts it. it. It's like the centroid is on this median. Seems like it's closer to the side, right? It's closer to this side. This, this segment is shorter than this segment, right? Look at the other ones. Uh, what about this median? Well, it looks like the same thing. This segment is shorter than this segment. Let's look at the last median, the green. Oh, that's a pretty good green. So as you can see here, it's also closer to the side than to the vertex, okay? So the unique thing about a median is that the centroid cuts every median in a two to one ratio. If we take the blue median here, this one, this length right here could be 2x, and this length could be x. So the part that is closer to the side is going to be x, and the part that's closer to the vertex is going to be 2x. So x here is one third of the whole median, of the whole median, right? And this segment here is going to be two thirds of the whole median. Any questions? One last thing about medians and centroids is that you can find the centroid if the coordinates, if the triangle's vertices are given as coordinates. So let's say we have the coordinate graph here, right? This is the x axis, y axis. So this could be like, I don't know, one, four. It'd be like three, negative one. You have negative four, negative one. Okay. So let's say we had these three points. We could find the centroid by taking the x and y coordinates independently. So the x coordinates are going to be negative four, three, and one. Okay. The x coordinate of the centroid is the average of, of, of all of these. So to find the average, we add and divide by three, right? That's the mean. That's how we find the mean. So this is the x coordinate. And the y coordinate is going to be the average of the y coordinates of each of the three points. So that's going to be negative one plus four minus one all over three. So this is the centroid. These are the coordinates of the centroid. And if you were to calculate this, you would get your answer. So this would be two thirds and this would be zero actually. So zero, two thirds. So it's going to be somewhere like mm, here. This is going to be the centroid. Pretty cool. Okay. Any questions? So those are medians and centroids. All right, two problems here. I did not draw the diagram for the second one, so I'll draw this one right now. So those are the two problems. Four minutes.
So for this, these two problems, first we know that the median is going to cut a triangle in half, so that both halves are going to have equal area. So what does that mean? If each halves have equal area, then 2x equals the area of the original, which means if each half has one half the area of the original. So each half is going to have one half the area, which is just 35 over 2. Okay. Next one. When it doesn't tell you, so some a lot of people gave me answers like 2x plus 10, right? But no, it, it just says, what is BD? It wants you to find the length of BD. So it wants to give you, you have to give them the actual value, the numerical value of BD, okay? So the first thing we know is that DP, we call this x, then BD, BP is going to be 2x. No, not 2x. I'll, I'll use a different variable because that's a little confusing. Maybe like 2a. Okay. <clears throat> we know that bp is 2 times the length of pd. So if we multiply pd by 2, we get bp. So if we multiply this by 2, we get bp. So we, we're going to do 2 times 3x plus 1, which is just going to be 6x plus 2, which is the distributive property. That's going to equal the dp, bp, 9 minus x. So 7x equals 7, x equals 1. Okay. So now we know that bd is going to be B, dp plus bp, right? So that's going to be 2x plus 10. That, that's the answer a lot of people gave me. And that would be right. That is correct. That's on, that's on the right path. But you need to give the actual value because x equals 1 uh, is going to be 12. All right. Any questions? Cool. So two more problems here. I did not draw the second one again. So let me draw this. All right, so I'll give you three minutes, no, two minutes. Okay, so for the first one, we know that the coordinates of the center are just going to be the average of the coordinates of all the three points. 
So the x coordinates, we can take them individually first. So it's going to be 7 minus 3 plus 0 divided by 3. And the other coordinate is going to be 3 plus 2 plus 2 divided by 3. So that's the centroid. We just need to evaluate this a little bit more. So it's going to be 4 thirds. And then we got 7 thirds. So that's the centroid. Last one. We know that each section, each of the six sections have equal area, which means each of them has one sixth of the original. So each section has 18 divided by six, three. So each section is gonna have three. This part is made of two sections. So it's gonna have area three times two, which is six. Okay, any questions? So now we're going to go on to perpendicular bisectors. So what is a perpendicular bisector? Well, let's take a line here. Can we draw a perpendicular bisector? Well, we know that's going to be a bisector, which means it's going to have to go through the middle of this line, the midpoint. It's going to have to go through. But it also says perpendicular, which means probably means that this line is going to be perpendicular to the original. So this is going to be the perpendicular bisector. Okay, it has to go through the middle and it's perpendicular. So it's gonna be like this, okay? And the cool thing about perpendicular bisectors is that any point on the, perp on the perpendicular bisector, if I take this point on the line, it is equidistant, which means it's the same distance away from the endpoints of the original line. You can prove this by saying, oh, these halves are A because it's a bisector. We have a constant height H. This side by the Pythagorean theorem is going to be A squared plus H squared. This is going to be A squared plus H squared. So they must be equal, OK? So any point on a perpendicular bisector is the same distance away, equidistant, from the endpoints of the original line, OK? So if I had original line here, I have to draw a perpendicular bisector. Any point on this perpendicular bisector is going to be equidistant these two distances are equal. And these two distances are equal. These two distances are equal. If I take this point on a perpendicular bisector, these two distances are equal. Okay, so that's what a perpendicular bisector is. Now, if we were to draw all the perpendicular bisectors to the sides of a triangle, well, it's going to be something like this. Um, They're going to intersect at a point, just like the medians. This is called the circumcenter. Oops, circum. That point's called the circumcenter. And what it means is that if we were to draw a, a circle that circumscribes this triangle, which means that this circle is going to eat up the triangle, okay? Perfectly fits. So all three vertices are going to be on the edges of the circle. The circumcenter is the center of that circle. Okay. The circumcenter is created by drawing perpendicular bisectors to all three sides. They're going to intersect at one point, and that's going to be the circumcenter. Okay. Any questions? So there's not really that much else to talk about circumcenters, except that there's a formula to find the circumradius, which is the radius of the circumcircle. So this is gonna be the circumcircle. And the circumcircle is gonna have a circumradius, which is the radius of the circumcircle. Okay, I'm saying circum a lot. And the circumference, <laughs> never mind. So the circumcircle has the radius. So what is that radius? R is gonna to equal to A, B, C over four capital A. So A, B, and C are the side lengths of the triangle, okay? Capital A is the area of that triangle. And we know that we can use Heron's formula to find the area, okay? So if we have all three sides of a triangle, we can find the circumradius for that triangle, okay? Given by this formula. If, you got, we have, if we have the radius of the circumcircle, we could go the opposite direction. We could find the area equals A, B, C, over four R. You can see how I just rearranged those terms a little bit. So this is how you can find the area of a triangle. You have the side lengths and its circumradius, okay? But you don't really need to memorize this one because that's just rearranging the first one. So 
ABC over 4A. Okay, any questions? All right. This might take a while, so I'll give you guys six minutes. All right. So for the first one, the proof problem, you do not need to chat your answer to me.
All right, so for the first one, always draw out a diagram. Homework seven, you know that any right triangle inscribed inside a circle has the hypotenuse on the diameter. Now you know this because since this has to be a right angle, it has to span out an arc of 180 degrees, right? Two times that angle, okay? So that means it has to be on the diameter. So if a right triangle inscribed in a circle has the hypotenuse as the diameter, then the midpoint of the hypotenuse is gonna be the center of the circle, okay, the circumcenter. But if you notice here, if we connect this out to here, that's also the circumradius. So that's how you prove it, right? It's all, it's the same distance, R, 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 away from the vertices, okay? So if that's true, then in any right triangle, then the distance from the midpoint of the hypotenuse to the vertex is just gonna be half the length of the hypotenuse, right? Because here we have half the length and that's equal to here. So the hypotenuse here is gonna be five. So half of that is five halves. And we automatically know that it's five halves the distance away from the vertex. So that's the answer. Okay. So this is something you should remember that in a right triangle, all these distances are equal. Okay. If we have the midpoint of the hypotenuse right there. All right. Go on to two more problems. Take five minutes for these. How about skip the first one? Because that was just a direct application of the formula. And I have these Huron's formula, so that might take a while. Just do the second one.
but these problems might be a little hard because they're basically all math council level problems. So let me just draw out the triangle here. It's going to look something like this. All right. I would recommend drawing in the certain radius. I'm trying to use that to find the side thing. Give you maybe two more minutes. There's one way you can do this problem by applying the formula. So try to figure that one out. That's probably the most direct way to do it. There's a smarter way though. So yeah. All right, so for this one, I'm going to apply the formula here. The side length is going to be S. All sides are S. So it's going to be S times S times S, which is S to the third power over four times the area. You could use Heron's formula. That would take a while, though. But you could just notice that in an equilateral triangle, you can drop this down. So this will be S over two. We have a 30, 60, 90 triangle. It's going to be square root 3s over 2. So the area is going to be square root 3s over 2, which is the height times s times 1 half. Right? Because that's the base times the height. So the area is going to be s squared square root 3 over 4. Okay, so that's the area. So we're going to just plug this into the equation. All these fours cancel out. We've got two s's down below, one s up top. So that, those are going to cancel out. So this is going to equal to s over square root 3. r is 2. 2 equals s over square root 3. So s is going to equal 2 times the square root of 3. And that's the answer. Okay, So that's the most direct way to do it. A more a trickier way, a better way. As you can see here, if we drop this down, that's a perpendicular bisector, right? It's got to be a perpendicular bisector because it goes through the centroid, it goes through the circumcenter. But if you note, that's also a median because it goes all the way to the vertex. So this is a median as well. So if this is a median, r is here, and this length is going to be three r over two because r is two thirds of that median. So the height of this triangle is three r over two. You can just use 30, 60, 90 triangles. S over two is just gonna be that divided by square root of three equals s over two. To find s, we just multiply both sides by two. Wait a second. Let 
Yeah, so the height is going to be three halves r is going to equal square root three over two. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> okay, so, so if you were to do this, you would find the same answer right here. Okay. Now we're going to do the last thing today, which is angle bisectors. An angle bisector is something that bisects an angle, which means it's going to cut this angle in half. So these two angles are going to be equal. Okay, so that, that's an angle bisector. If we draw all the angle bisectors in a triangle, it's going to be a little weird here. Make sure that you're bisecting the angles. Okay. Those are all the angle bisectors. They meet at a point. This is called the in center. The in center is the center of the circle that's inscribed in this triangle. Okay? So all the angle bisectors are going to intersect at the in center, and the in center is the center of the circle that's inscribed inside the triangle. We also have the in radius, which is obviously the radius of the circle. And the in radius can be calculated. A nice little formula, R equals 2A over P. So let me actually use a capital A here to not confuse you. A is the area, P is the perimeter of the triangle. So the in center, the in radius is going to be two times the area divided by the perimeter. Okay, so that's the formula for the in radius. Any questions? All right, so another thing we have for angle bisectors in the triangle is that if we draw one angle bisector, so I'm gonna try my best to bisect this angle right here. You can see how this side is a little bit longer than this side. And that's a reason. So let's, really, let's well, name these points, A, B, C, and then D. We have the angle bisector theorem in which the ratio between this side and this side is equal to the ratio between this side and this side, which means AB over BD is equal to AC over CD. So the ratio of the blue sides, let me use a highlighter. The ratio of the blue sides is equal to the ratio of the red sides. So it's gonna be the longer red side over the shorter red side. That ratio is equal to the longer blue side over the longer, the shorter blue side. Okay, so that's the angle bisector theorem. Okay, any questions about that? So two things about angle, angle bisectors. One, we have the angle bisector theorem, which is right here. And secondly, we have the, the in circle and the in radius. All right, now we go on to problems. The first problem is like prove that is actually the in center. So you're gonna have to use your knowledge. Here's a hint, you're gonna use your knowledge of tangents. Let's get the second one. It's just a direct application of the formula for the radius. Maybe I'll give you guys one more minute of think time because this is one of those questions. Okay, so for this one. Let's just draw out a triangle, you know. For geometry, always draw it out. It doesn't matter. 
what's going on? Always draw it out. Let's draw it a little better. As you can see here, all the sides are tangent to the circle. Which means that this is A right here. And this is A. We know from tangents, that's the truth, right? If we have one point and we draw two tangents from that point to the circle, those two sides are going to be equal. So it's going to be B, B, and then we got C. So now let's look at one of them. Let's take the center of the circle here, R. We got radii go out here. If we draw in a line here to the circle, to the center, we know that's going to be an angle bisector because of what we just learned on the last slide, right? So we want to prove that this is actually the angle bisector of whatever this angle is. If you know here that these two triangles are equal, they're congruent, right? They share the same hypotenuse. Let me highlight the two triangles actually. This one and this one. They're congruent. They have the same hypotenuse. They have the same A as a side. They have the same R as a side. What this means is that all angles in this triangle, in these triangles, are congruent. This angle is congruent to this, congru uh, this angle, which means that that line has bisected the whole angle, which means that this line that goes through the in-center is an angle bisector. If we do the same thing for all the other sides, we will find that these lines bisect their angles. And that is the proof that they do actually go through the in-center, OK? One last problem here. This is a pretty fun problem. Uh, use, you probably got this answer from homework number seven. I think it was like problem four or five. And this gives you the radius in specifically in a right triangle. So now you can use this and what you just learned to prove the Pythagorean theorem. And that's a pretty, pretty fun problem. Give me some time to work on that. We will go a few minutes extra uh, just so you can work through this one. You're going to have to use the formula, the radius. So this is the first way you can find the radius, specifically in the right triangle. But the other way, generally, for all triangles, is going to be 2a over p, right?
If you're not quite done, I don't want to ruin it for you. I want you to keep working on it. So I'm not going to tell you the answer here. I will put it in the homework, okay? So then you can check out the answer there. But keep working on this if you want. But that will be the end of today's class. So I'll see you guys next week. Bye.